uh, that uh, uh, and sometimes these kind of measures that uh, seemed uh, impossible or untimely before uh, these uh, efforts. Uh, and in my, I, I have served uh, different capacities in the United Nations, um, being part of the expert mechanism on the rights of indigenous peoples, and and uh, after that, United Nations Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues uh, for more than ten years, and um, I can say that um, so this uh, language movement in the United Nations has been one of the fastest, one of the most efficient, uh, because sometimes in the United Nations uh, processes, decision-making processes are very long. Uh, sometimes from the, fro from the introduction of an idea uh, to, to the enforcement, uh, it can take uh, tens of years. Um, for example, uh, in order for the United Nations to adopt the legally binding I mean, a, a document for indigenous people's rights, such as the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, it took more than 30 years for indigenous peoples to advocate for their rights in the United Nations. So um, for the International Year of Indigenous Languages to be introduced and activated, it took only uh, uh, less than one year because I remember one meeting uh, that happened in, in, uh, in early uh, 2016 in, in the headquarters in New York, uh, it, it is the meeting where uh, the idea of proclamation of an, an international year was first introduced by indigenous peoples. Uh, so already same year in December, United Nations General Assembly, that is the most uh, significant uh, body and gathering in the United Nations. So this General Assembly already proclaimed the International Year of Indigenous Languages. Uh, and when it was, um, it, when the International Year came to an end, um, the international community decided that uh, one year, 12 months is not enough, enough is not enough time um, for, for the movement. And we need much more uh, resources, much more efforts uh, to be uh, done. So the, 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 the all states basically um, unanimously decided to continue these uh, efforts, and so they proclaimed uh, a whole decade uh, for action uh, to um, uh, to accomplish much more in terms of uh, revitalization, preservation, teaching, and uh, promotion of of indigenous languages. So right. the if 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 the international year was meant to be uh, most mostly for uh, spreading information about the critical loss of indigenous languages, about uh, it, it was more about um, um, in introducing um, you know some kind of or brainstorming about ideas how to safeguard these languages. So the international decade. Is more about action because we really uh, need to use this, uh, uh, you know, ten years uh, for action, effective action, uh, so that at the end of the decade we can say uh, that, uh, you know, some uh, that that the, the number of speakers have increased, uh, many languages have become uh, more spoken, many languages have expanded their uh, domains uh, where they are spoken. And um, at least uh, some communities can say that uh, uh, you know the languages are not endangered anymore, which is not the case right now, as we know, according to different statistics. And there is, as you know, there is uh, uh, you know there are different uh, sources. Uh, but the our United Nations Secretary General uh, at that time, uh, Pan Ki Moon, used to say that uh, one language dies every second week. So basically, this statistics is is not very encouraging, and we know that thousands of languages are endangered, are um, uh, vulnerable, and uh, the decade is uh, a global effort that should uh, strive to um, to uh, resolve this international uh, language uh, diversity crisis. 
this crisis is basically similar that that uh, that we have with the biodiversity. So the biodiversity crisis and the linguistic diversity. So the, these two uh, crises that indigenous people suffer from the most. And this is actually already, um, there is some scientific evidence that uh, indigenous peoples, uh, so those indigenous peoples who uh, have preserved most of the biological diversity, so they also have preserved most of the linguistic diversity of the world. So, and many, many spots of the world are rich for biological diversity are also simultaneously rich for uh, linguistic diversity. Uh, and as I said, uh, so one of the uh, pillars uh, in the global effort to preserve indigenous languages is to in is the introduction of the human rights based approach. And one of the cornerstones stones of of the um, uh, of this this effort is the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, which recognizes the linguistic rights of indigenous peoples. Uh, so the right to language is a human right, and if we take the Article Thirteen of the of the Declaration, with that the article says that indigenous peoples have the right to revitalize, use, develop, and transmit to future generations their histories, languages, oral traditions, oral traditions philosophies, writing systems, and literature, and to designate and retain their own names uh, for communities, places, uh, etc. So um, um, I just wanted to cite this, this exact language from the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples because uh, this, is so, uh, this is so significant. This is something that Indigenous peoples uh, have um, uh, have worked on for decades in the United Nations to put this language in place, and and now uh, it is useful uh, for our advocacy uh, during the International Decade of Indigenous Languages. Uh, so the 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 human rights based approach approach is introduced, and every document, uh, every action plan that uh, that um, has been developed uh, for the International Decade. Uh, on international level or mm, local level, national level, so uses uh, the the language from the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. Uh, that is a human rights language, uh, and um, of course, uh, mm, uh, you know, speaking about uh, human rights, we we should not forget about the uh, interlinkages about the. Uh, different connections between different human rights because all human rights are, uh, as you as you know, so they all are interconnected and and interdependent, and human rights are indivisible because we cannot basically preserve uh, linguistic rights of indigenous peoples if all the other rights are are, are being violated, uh, and uh, this is why indigenous peoples uh, connect linguistic rights to the uh, land rights, uh, self-determination rights, um, and and all the other rights that the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples uh, stipulates. Um, and one good example that I can provide from my uh, own um, country uh, is uh, reindeer husbandry. Uh, reindeer husbandry that is um, a traditional livelihood uh, in the Arctic um, of Ru Arctic zone of Russia, uh, where many indigenous peoples have um, reindeers, and so they are dependent on this uh, um, this uh, uh, livelihood. And so the Nenets people, for example, uh, in the Arctic, say uh, that um, uh, if their children, um, you know, are raised with the families. So are uh, in tundra uh, together with the families. Uh, so they can already, and so they, they learn the language, the Nenets language. So they can assist with the reindeer husbandry already at the age of six because they, with the language, so they also accept and they acquire um, a lot of the vocabulary that is related to the reindeer husbandry. So they learn in the language. They also learn how to, uh, to herd uh, reindeers. And, and the opposite, 
those kids who are taken to the boarding schools uh, and who do not live with their families um, in in tundra uh, for you know because they are in in the boarding schools so when they're coming back for summer time so they cannot assist their families uh, and their parents with the reindeer husbandry uh, because they have not acquired that vocabulary that they have not acquired that those skills that are very needed uh, for the for this tradition to to, to continue uh, so th this th this kind of examples I think there are many uh, many examples in uh, across the world like many indigenous communities um, also Russian indigenous peoples I didn't understand that before when I started my career as a, as a human rights activist uh, because in my community for example language uh, is a big deal so we uh, is the first question question number one when we advocate for rights uh, of, of Karelian people Finnegri peoples so we also we always speak about um, language language first because if language dies then the people is all you know is over so it's it's not possible to, to speak about um, uh, indigenous peoples identity if the language is not there uh, but then I understood that some indigenous peoples uh, in the Arctic, so they are um, not so concerned. On, I mean, they are concerned, but they uh, more con are more concerned about the livelihoods and the lands. And and then I understood why. So it's because really, uh, if if you lose the land, if you lose the the uh, reindeers, for example, so then uh, you also lose the language. So they they see those interconnections and the uh, promote uh, all these issues as a package, as a as a whole, and so you cannot disconnect language from all these other uh, um, important uh, important rights of indigenous peoples. Um, but of course, um, uh, you know when the, the international year, international decade was uh, introduced and uh, proclaimed, then um, the General Assembly um, designated. UNESCO, UNESCO as uh, an organization to lead on the international uh, decade of indigenous languages. And uh, in UNESCO secretariat um, uh, assisted indigenous peoples to um, establish uh, an, um, a steering committee, a, a global task force uh, to lead on the, uh, on the decade uh, and the steering committee and, and the, the, the task force uh, consists of representatives of member states um, and indigenous peoples from all seven socio-cultural regions of the world, and also uh, from experts of different United Nations uh, mechanisms. So um, coming together, these people uh, have established a, a, a task force that uh, has elaborated on a a global action plan, uh, plan of action for the international decade. And this plan of action uh, is a product of um, um, con consultations and discussions in, in, in different regions. And it, it uh, consists of priorities that indigenous peoples have set uh, for the international decade. And these priorities, of course, include uh, things like education, uh, including traditional uh, indigenous peoples' own education systems, uh, writing systems. Uh, it it consists of uh, priorities that um, cover um, eradication of hunger, eradication of uh, poverty, uh, the role of indigenous languages in sustainable development, the role of indigenous languages in in gender uh, equality, and all these important issues that are. Um, you know the the humanity is interested in so um, the, the 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 steering committee uh, was able to uh, include those uh, different factors and and priorities into the global action plan. But of course, uh, when you, you know, the, the, you know global action plan is is a global um, universal um, agenda, uh, but then different countries the United Nations member states, so they um, have agreed to establish national action plans. And still, you know, not so not so many have done so, but uh, many 
uh, have um, uh, already decided or committed to, to do the, the action plans. And so these action plans uh, should, of course, um, strive to um, meet the priorities of the global action plan, but also, uh, and probably even more significantly, uh, to to meet the the local specificities, uh, because each region, each country, uh, each community has its own uh, specificity, and and there are some uh, some things uh, that are you know very 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 local, and um, therefore indigenous languages, uh, you know the, the indigenous communities of course should have the the central role in. In, 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 um, uh, in you know elaboration uh, or in, in introducing of this uh, national action plans uh, because these indigenous communities they they know the best uh, what are the the local spe you know specificities and what are the the issues that uh, have to be resolved uh, because some languages and, and also languages are at a different stage of of uh, development uh, and existence. Uh, because some languages are already uh, on the internet and they are spoken by hundreds of thousands of people, uh, while some languages are spoken by a small community uh, and also they are not uh, written languages. For example, they, they are not uh, on the internet. And so it is hard to, uh, to set same priorities, development priorities for these different groups of languages. I can raise some examples, right? In in my uh, near my community, there is a, a very small number of community uh, of um, uh, Votian people. Votian is one of the Finno Greek peoples uh, that is only uh, seventy people, you know, left. Seventy people left in the community, and 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 only uh, maybe ten people can speak some language, different level of speaking um, of of this language, and and that's why, of course, you know, saying that. These languages should, or these communities should strive to uh, put the languages on the internet or develop their, um, I don't know, um, develop some um, uh, systems for spell check, spell checking systems or um, uh, voice recognition systems. So this is uh, not a priority for this community because they they are concerned about. Um, Organizing a language nest, for example, where they can uh, teach uh, small children uh, to to speak the language, to acquire the language as second language, because they, I mean, to acquire it as a first language, not possible already for them. Uh, they, uh, this uh, community is concerned about documentation of this language so that uh, it could be on record, and uh, also mm, uh, then. You know, somebody can create textbooks for this language and and uh, introduce it in school, uh, because it's not taught in school. Uh, so and and we have another another example. For example, um, the language of Saha, in uh, in the Republic of Saha Yakutia in in the eastern Siberia, in Russia. Uh, so this language is spoken by hundreds of thousands of people, and this is a, an official language uh, of this republic, and. Uh, like a state language, along with Russian, uh, and this language is spoken by politicians that uh, sit in the parliament. Sometimes they uh, have deliberations in the parliament uh, using Saha language. Uh, they this language is on the internet. There are um, already, uh, you know, high level te language technology developed for this language, including um, uh, translation systems and and etc. And 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 of course, you know, for this language, even though I mean it, it is at this level, but it's still vulnerable because um, uh, it is uh, marginalized from some spheres. Uh, it is uh, not totally uh, prevailing in um, uh, some public domains and, and so on. So indigenous peoples are concerned about this language too, and and they have a different priority uh, for their um, you know for the development of their language, and there are communities in the middle, you know, because these are two extremes and there are communities in the middle, there are much more of them. Uh, so they are concerned about um, both mm, school teaching, um, you know, language nests, 
kindergartens they are concerned about uh, um, for example uh, you know documentation and also language technology and all these priorities of course they are stipulated in in the global action plan and um, uh, UNESCO encourages member states uh, to um, to uh, to develop national actions pl action plans to include those local specificities but also the idea is I think um, that indigenous peoples and indigenous commun language communities can also develop their own um, their own plans uh, where they can mm, institutional plans organizational plans tribal plans whatever so where they can uh, mm, uh, you know uh, uh, use all the all the knowledge all the information they have uh, and states when they introduce uh, national actions plan they, the plans they also have to consult indigenous peoples because sometimes and we have seen these examples when um, these national actions plans action plans uh, are introduced by scientists and and also by um, local I mean by authorities basically by national authorities and indigenous peoples do not have central role there which is not um, not what uh, the international decade uh, is all about so the education systems of course is important as I said and but the, it cannot alone um, rescue uh, all the languages. We have to pay attention to the grassroots activism and solidarity in, in language communities uh, because they are key uh, for language maintenance and revitalization. And uh, at this picture, uh, you can see um, Karyal and Kieran Kodi, which is the Karelian language house that is uh, uh, in, in my community, a, a village of uh, Vialyarvi, uh, where indigenous peoples uh, got together and created this house. So they basically physically built the house uh, because they needed a physical space where they can exercise uh, language uh, with the theater, uh, people, local women weaving uh, some, uh, some crafts. And so that while speaking the language at the same time, uh, they have established a language nest in this in this house. And this is the house where nobody can speak any other language than Karelian. So this is a, a mobilization uh, of language resources in a, in a specific community. So, and this kind of uh, projects that should be uh, supported uh, by uh, by states and by local authorities and also by the, also by the by the global community uh, because, you know, building on, on this kind of initiatives, so then you can achieve much more and achieve whatever is written in, in, in the global action plan. Um, another uh, important um, uh, dimension is to develop uh, um, scripts, uh, support literature and information technologies. And as I said, some languages, and as you know, some languages are uh, lacking the, the script and, and written tradition. So, and there are initiatives in my country, for example, uh, in its language, in its language, uh, if, you know, five years ago didn't have a script, but now, um, uh, the, you know, help, um, thanks to the uh, indigenous, commu indigenous language community, but also with support of some private sector and, and government. Uh, so with all, uniting all these efforts, so now uh, there is a script and there are textbooks that uh, have been introduced in order to teach this this, this language to um, to children. Um, the global action plan also um, uh, provides for um, institutional capacity building of indigenous peoples, good governance, and and participation in decision making. Because uh, you know supporting the language as as a as a as a language of of decision making of indigenous communities is a very important task. Uh, there is also a recognition of indigenous languages um, uh, for legislation, security, and democracy. So all these these um, issues are also dependent on on, on strong language skills and, and strong language um, presence in the community. Uh, United Nations uh, Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues, where I served, 
uh, for three years, um, recently discussed uh, indigenous languages and um, provided uh, several important recommendations to UNESCO and to, um, to the member states. The first is um, importance of full and effective participation of indigenous peoples at all levels. I already said that. Uh, national and local action plans, institutional action plans, and of course, adequate fi financial resources, allocation of financial resources, uh, because before, be, be, without, uh, without finances, uh, it is not possible to, uh, to introduce many important measures. Uh, there should be a um, change of paradigm, uh, increased role of private sector, and support for creative industries, creative economy of indigenous peoples, and recognition uh, of uh, indigenous peoples' own practices, uh, indigenous peoples' media, indigenous peoples' own schools, and, and all the other grassroots level projects that uh, uh, these communities introduce. Um, and finally, uh, before I conclude, uh, just wanted to uh, to speak about several um, ideas that um, have been discussed and uh, that are important also. It, it, one is the, um, uh, you know, elaborate, uh, planning. Uh, I already spoke about language planning. So each, languages, each language should have a plan, a development plan that um, the community uh, with support of other um, um ex you know expert community and scientists and so on so uh, each 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 language should have a development plan there should be also a monitoring plan uh, uh that um uses uh indicators so in the global action plan has indicators uh and also the the, the national action plan should have uh indicators that uh, are verifiable uh and that could be uh, monitored um at the end of the decade, but also uh, during the decade, uh, after some periods periods of time, and UNESCO UNESCO is doing a, a monitoring guideline, and also um, at national level there are also some efforts to to monitor what is going on, and also the action plan should be uh, fixed because this is a living document. I think uh, it shouldn't be uh, just um, written in stone uh, because life is changing. Uh, we need to consider different factors that occur during the decade. So we should be able to, to fix um, certain things that are wrong, for example, or that have changed. So these action plans uh, can be changed, can be added. And, and that's why we need monitoring. We need uh, evaluation processes. Um, there should be also a collection of data, uh, relevant language related data uh, in the communities. Uh, unfortunately, uh, so, so far, you know, there are states where, for example, when they uh, do the, the census, um, censuses, so that they don't uh, collect relevant data that, that is needed for um, understanding of what is the linguistic situation in the country. Um, and uh, in Russia, for example, so the, the, the recent data, I mean, the recent, uh, uh, what is it, uh, census, all Russian census that was held two years ago. So it, it was so controversial. Uh, first, it was in the pandemic time. Um, so before the pandemic censuses, for example, 10 years ago, 2010 um, census, so the, uh, every house was, um, every apartment, every house, uh, so the, the the census people went to this you know to every family to ask uh questions and so they, they wrote all the information and one question is, uh, is how how well these people are educated because some people don't ask certain questions or don't un understand the answers um uh, if they hear some uh some people say well i'm my, my first language is Karelian, so the the, the census person sometimes don't understand, doesn't understand what the Karelian language is. So they just put Russian instead of Karelian. And um, this is one thing. Another thing is that um, 
more and more the censuses have been done uh, online and, 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 and language questions are not obligatory. So people just skip uh, if they don't want to answer, so they just skip uh, the question and data is not collected. So then we don't need, uh, I mean, then we don't have any information about the linguistic situation in the country uh, or in the community. So that's another um, important issue. And, um, and also, um, of course, the, the decade has just started, uh, but we're still already thinking ahead of, of, uh, of time and, and uh, thinking about uh, next period, what, what, to, what after, after the decade. And um, as you know, so there is this uh, 2030 development agenda, uh, the 17 sustainable development goals that do not include any language related goals or indicators so far. Uh, so there is an idea uh, that um, the post 2030 development agenda should include languages, uh, uh, should include indigenous languages. And uh, this is our um, opportunity uh, to advocate for indigenous languages to be uh, um, a constant part of, of the global sustainable development agenda because this is really about it, so, right? So without languages, we cannot really speak about uh, development. And, and finally, um, so uh, I just encourage you to, to check um, the website of the International Decade of Indigenous Languages, uh, look at the documents that are provided uh, and also apply uh, for the steering committee or consult with your communities to, uh, so that some of you can become active members of this global movement of indigenous languages, uh, become member of the global task force, the steering committee, uh, because this work is, is, is very important, I think. And, and, and also I know that you have uh, a lot of knowledge uh, to, be, um, uh, to, you know, to be used in, in, this, um, in this effort. Now, thank you very much. I think, I'm sorry, I, I spoke probably too much, uh, but, um, uh, we'll be very happy to answer uh, questions questions uh, if you have any.